Hey guys, it's Luke Jarasak with gslukedfs.com, bringing you a preview for the 2021 Waste Management Open um, there in Phoenix, down in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, so this is going to be my first video format um, instead of the blog that I normally do, so uh, take uh, that in mind, bear with me a little bit. Um, but I'm going to be able to get out more content this way and also um, more types of content. I'm going to be able to go over more of the gambling lines, going to be able to go more in depth into game theory and whatnot. So I think uh, you guys are going to like it a lot. Um, so um, if you haven't seen my content before, if this is the first time you're coming across it on YouTube, um, I use a data-based approach to predict golf, NBA, football, all that stuff. Um, I create custom models and I combine probability with reason. Um, and I think it makes sense to just use probabilities, math and statistics to do things, especially in the real world, because a lot of times you have to use reason to cycle through that, figure out exactly how to adapt that the best way. So that's, uh, yeah, that's what I do here. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. This is going to be, uh, if this is your first time seeing it, um, let me know what you think. So this video is going to be previewing the Waste Management Open and TPC Scottsdale specifically. Um, when it comes to golf and predicting pr golf specifically, it's a lot based on the course um, and the players that are playing and how they fit that course and how we would expect them to perform there. So for TPC Scottsdale, um, it's known as the stadium course. Um, it's very famous. Um, it's been played for the last 20, 30 years under different names. Um, but for the last 10, 15 years, it has been the Waste Management um, Phoenix Open. So it is a desert course. It is in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and it looks like a desert course. If you've ever played one before, um, they're very wide open. There's no hills or anything like that. You're in a desert. Um, and there's a lot of wide open areas. Um, instead of there being dog legs and trees blocking you out, there's going to be different desert areas that you have to carry it over, different lakes. Um, some desert courses can afford to have lakes and whatnot, um, and they create a lot of difficulty that way. Um, TBC Scottsdale um, is normally packed with fans. I think that's what it's best known for. Um, it usually has like 20, 30,000 fans. Um, and usually 10 to 15,000 of those actually all around the 16th hole. That's why it's called the stadium course. TBC Scottsdale is known um, as a second shot golf course. Um, so what that means is that most of your shots gained um, at TBC Scottsdale and second shot golf courses are on your approaches. Um, you know, maybe a third on a par five. Um, but you get the point. Uh, these courses are notorious for having complex greens and things around the greens. So at TPC Scottsdale, there are a ton of bunkers. There's a lot of lakes. Um, and there's also just the greens themselves. They're very complex. There's a lot of hills. Um, there's a lot of um, runoff areas that'll take you off into the hazards and whatnot. So you really have to know where to place your iron shots and you have to be able to flight them the right way. Last year's winner, Webb Simpson, is probably the, the best example of this. He's perfect at his distance control, you know, how much spin he puts on the ball. Uh, he really does a good job at placing his irons where he wants to. Um, and that's why he won last year. And um, we'll get a little bit into um, why approach players do so well here um, in a bit. But um, that's its main characteristic. It's a second shot golf course. Um, it played at a just over 7,200 yards last year at 72.61, um, which makes it about average length um, because it is a par 71. Um, so it's not, you don't have to be a bomber to, to win here, um, but obviously distance always helps. Um, but it also does feature a drivable par four um, here at TPC Scottsdale. It's uh, the 17th hole, it's just after the stadium hole. Um, and it's, it's actually one of the tougher holes at the golf course. Um, even though it is drivable and you can make eagle, it is possible. There's also a lake right next, right to the left of the green that swallows up tons of balls. Tons of people make, you know, bogey, double bogey, triple bogey, that kind of thing and, and lose the golf tournament or, or win it with an eagle. Um, so it makes it really fun um, and it kind of adds to that stadium type feel, you know, 16, 17 and then obviously 18 um, there at the end is, is quite a ride at times. So let's uh, let's discuss a little bit of uh, what makes a great golfer here. So I kind of alluded to it before being a second shot golf course and that, you know, you have to be precise with your irons. So shot screened approach 
um, is going to be the most important stat by far this week. Um, I run a regression model. Um, I know a lot of other YouTubers do as well um, to try and figure out exactly what stats are correlated to winning and high and you know finishing position here at the Waste Management Open. And because we have so much data, it is very apparent that shots gained approach is the most important stat. And it's obviously backed up by the uh, eye test as well. Um, you obviously, with all of the hazards around the greens, having to place the ball in the right spot on the green in order to make birdies, um, that really shouldn't come as a surprise. Um, Shots gains approach is normally um, very sticky from week to week as well. It's normally a statistic that you can run hot on um, or run cold on. And it's something that's very predictable and projectable from week to week. So it's, it is actually a really good thing that um, shots gain approach is our stat that is going to be the number one focus this week because it is so reliable. Um, so we're going to be able to make pretty strong models this week. And I'll be playing pretty aggressively in fantasy um, for that reason. Um, another stat uh, we're going to keep an eye on this week um, is distance, right? So I mentioned before that it wasn't a long golf course, but the distance was always good. Um, and that's because whenever you're closer to a green, you, you probably know this from playing golf before, it's just easier to hit the green and to place your ball. Um, when you have you know less distance to cover through the air, there's less distance to miss left and right. Um, and at the Waste Management Open, it is a huge advantage to, to not hit the ball in these hazards. Um, being closer, um, and I think a good example of this would be the U.S. Open this year um, in Bryson DeChambeau. Um, Bryson DeChambeau, you know, wasn't very accurate off the tee. I think on his last round, he hit like one fairway or something like that, and he still shot six under. And the rest of the field was well over par. Um, and that's because he was so close to these greens. He was just bombing the ball down, you know, into the deep rough um, down there um, and up upstate New York and uh, just hacking it out hacking it onto the greens and uh, it worked um, i expect distance to have a similar effect this week where players that are hitting the ball you know farther down the fairways are going to have more simple shots into these complex greens um not that it it is a prerequisite to success here um, i'm not saying that but i i do think it is going to be helpful and it's something thing uh i'll use as a booster um in my models this week um another stat um to keep an eye on here, um, it's gonna be birdie or better percentage. So that is a player's ability to birdie a hole on average, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, but at a tournament like this, um, normally the winner makes like 20, 30 birdies on the week. They make a ton of them, you know. Um, there are big numbers out there. You are gonna make some bogeys out there because there is that complexity and there are so many hazards. But the ability to make birdies to make up for that is, is how you win this tournament. Um, so birdie or better percentage just for that reason alone is going to be important this week. Um, and it's also a good measure of a person's approach play because Shuskin's approach tries to encapsulate how close players are getting to pins. But an even better measure of that is birdie or better percentage because you can miss five feet from a pin below it and it'd be a very easy putt to make. Or you can you know miss above a hole and it'd be a slider left to right and it'd be almost impossible to make. Um, so it, it's a little bit of a better encapsulation of that to use birdie or better percentage. Um, so that's why I'm gonna include it as my third key stat because it helps um, even the playing field um, on that front. So just to get into some players I like. So this is a video is being recorded before the field is finalized. Um, so it'll probably come out on Tuesday night here. Um, but we don't exactly know who's gonna play. So I'm just gonna give you guys an idea of the types of players that I like. Some examples obviously as well to kind of drive that point home. Um, and then you can use that and find players that are similar. Um, so first of all, I like great ball strikers, right? So that shouldn't come as a surprise. You know, shot gain approach is the number one stat, number two being distance. So I'm looking for guys that can hit the ball where they want to almost every time. Um, these kind of players are gonna be players that are long off the tee. I mean, that kind of goes with ball striking to begin with, but also players that are accurate off the tee. So. Um, you know, you're thinking of some of the best drivers in the world, you know, Rory McIlroy um, is really good at driving the ball long, but also keeping it in the fairway. Um, and obviously with his irons, when he's hot, he's, he's one of the best in the world. Um, but even more so than with the driver, I want ball strikers with their irons. Um, so like I said, shot gains approach being number one, um, you got to be able to shape your shots here at TBC Scottsdale. You're, you know, going to have to bring balls in from left to right onto greens or right to left onto greens to avoid bunkers, to keep them in the right spots, to make the birdies that are necessary. And uh, you're also gonna need to have, um, I, I would say an ability to control your spin, right? Because you're on a desert golf course, it's, it's harder 
the swills, you know, a little bit more packed down. So uh, drives do um, travel farther. That is another side. But you're also going to be dealing with really firm greens. And if you're someone that can't control your spin, um, like some of the iron players that aren't as good, um, you may run off into water, into bunkers, and really get yourself in trouble. So, um, yeah, those uh, ball striking is going to be number one. Um, number two, I'd say, um, would be um, that distance, kind of like I was talking about before. Um, keeping that um, in play is going to be important as well. Um, and the number one thing I say will not be important this week. So this is, uh, I don't want to say it would be a bad thing if you have this, but for putting. Um, great putters don't normally win this tournament. And that's not because that putting holds them back, right? Being a great putter, making tons of putts is never a bad thing. But the great putters aren't typically the best iron players or the best ball strikers for, for that matter. And for that reason, I'm not going to be including putting in my model. Um, it's going to be very, you know, it's going to be encapsulated into shots being total, all that kind of fun stuff. But it's not going to be something that I'm trying to pinpoint in a player. Um, you're not, you're not going to win this golf tournament by out putting the competition. You're not going to win, you know, gain 12 strokes on the field putting. Um, and if they do this week, uh, you can come and laugh at me. <laughs> So uh, let's give some examples um, of some of these players um, that, that fit this mold. So first of all would be Justin Thomas. So uh, JT has great irons. He's probably the best ball striker in the world in terms of irons and off the tee play and around the green play. Um, and he's also very long, right? He hits the ball way out there. He's, he's not a guy who's, you know, having to hit five irons four irons into greens very often and i think that's going to play into his advantage he's going to be pulling the ball around putting it where he wants to um jt is also one of the best at taking spin off his shots hitting flop shots low shots draws everything like that um so for a poster boy this week i would definitely say it's jt um he's you know probably the best ball striker and if you can get someone that's even a fraction of what jt is in terms of his irons uh, you're going to be happy this week um, the next guy I'd say would be Bryson. Uh, I mentioned before that distance can be an equalizer. Um, Bryson's also pretty good with his irons. Um, it's because he hits a lot of wedges, obviously. Um, but he also has a weapon in the putter. Now, like I said, putting is not going to be something that I use to identify players this week. But putting is always an asset. And with Bryson, it's, it's a weapon. It's not just an asset. Um, so if you have a guy that's long off the tee like Bryson, um, lots of other players are long off the tee. You know, Dylan Fratelli is actually up there with him. Um, Brandon Hagee hitting them 340 last week um guys like him you know that have that sneaky distance if they're a good putter if they're good with their irons or they have been recently um they they could be a great fit this week just like bryson um bryson also has a really high birdie or better percentage um same with jt i meant to mention that before and for that reason those kind of guys they're going to get a lot of opportunities um, and they cash in a lot as well so they're good targets pretty much every week but especially in a week like um that we have coming up here at the Phoenix Open. Colin Morikawa is also someone I have my eyes on here a bit. Um, Colin Morikawa is pretty much like Tiger Woods with his irons. Now you're gonna get tired of me, you know, talking about the iron play. Um, but something that Colin Morikawa was also great with um, is he stays out of trouble. His tee shots are some of the straightest in the game, um, and I think that can be an asset this week as well. Um, it's you know rare to be long and straight off the tee, but that's what Colin Morikawa is, and that's why. Uh, I like him this week. Now to go down to more of like the lower tier players, those are uh, those two players you could pretty much point out any week as a great target, but specifically this week they, they fit well. Um, but for the lower tier, um, I'm first going to go with Emiliano Grio. Um, I don't even know if he's playing this week. Um, he may not be in the field. Um, but players like Emiliano um, are great with their irons. They're elite. They can when they get hot, they're the best in the field on um, that week. Um, but he has a huge glaring weakness in the putter. Um, he loses putting, loses strokes putting almost every single week. Um, he has weeks where he'll gain just a few, and normally he top fives. Um, Rio is a great target this week, especially like in a DraftKings kind of play, um, because if he gets that you know hot putter, he's he's going to top five, and he's because of his ball striking and how well it fits here. Um, another target um, down that lower range, actually a little bit higher up the board than Rio, would be someone like. Abraham Answer, um, who is a great iron player. He's not very long off the tee, but because this course isn't, you know, a bomber's golf course by any means, um, it'll, it'll actually get the job done. Um, he's also a very smart player. He, he plots himself around very well. He knows when to lay up. He doesn't always go for the par fives. And uh, I think having that smart edge and, and staying out of that trouble um, is important as well. 
Now, uh, another guy down the board. Now, this is more of a flyer play. I'm um, gonna be Sebastian Munoz. So Munoz is, you know, one of the biggest streaky birdie players um, on the tour. Um, he can make three or four birdies at a time. He can shoot ten under, eleven under, um, and then come out the next day and shoot seven over. Uh, Munoz has that birdie or better percentage. You know, he sh- you know takes aim at every single pin. You know, he doesn't hold back. And uh, I like that kind of play this week. I need someone to go out there and make 25, 30 birdies. And uh, Munoz, if he goes on one of those streaks, could very well do it. Um, now, I saved my uh, number one play for the end because it's the most obvious, um, and that's Hideki, right? Hideki Matsuyama. Um, he's won this event twice. I'm pretty sure it was his first win whenever he got that win. Um, and it's because he hits the ball straight, like, every time. If you've ever seen the call him Hideki Bot, because he just... he hits missiles dead straight every single time it's, it's like a robot um and his putter's his big weakness but he's won here and he's won here multiple times um i think that should speak volumes um if hideki's winning and of course it means that putting you know obviously isn't the number one stat that week because hideki's a horrible putter um but he gets the job done here he top fives a lot he's come runner up multiple times um for me that's a perfect encapsulation of what you're going to get at tpc scottsdale of course where irons are important putting's not and uh, any other assets you have I can help, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, keep that in mind. I mean, Hideki, I'm going to be betting this week. I'm going to be playing him in fantasy. There's just no reason not to. He loves the place. Um, and players just like him. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, all for the preview I have this week. It's my first one. Uh, hopefully, it, you know, I wasn't dragging along too much. Um, but uh, I'm, I may also release another video here in the next day or so. Um, going over the players that are in the DraftKings pool. Um, also, from a gambling side, some of the players I like maybe for outrights or top fives, top tens, that kind of stuff. Um, they're just not out yet. Um, it's a little bit too early for that. Um, DraftKings and all the sports books haven't gone around to it yet. Um, so, But look forward to that. Um, I'll put that out there. And, uh, yeah, it'll just be more content um, that I'll be able to do on this video basis. I'll be able to cover more... Um, content for you guys yeah so if you have any questions just let me know and uh that's it